Hey guys, uh, John here. Uh, Want to make this video because I haven't put out a video in a while. And uh, first of all, I'm doing great. Uh, doing good. Uh, doing a lot of gaming. Getting ready to uh, run an old school uh, AD and D game up this weekend. Uh, it's gonna be fun. You know, we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some old school stuff. Uh, you know. Kind of that old, you know, role-playing feel, you know, weird fantasy the first edition, you know, offered. Or Tad, or whatever. Um. Um, and speaking of settings, um. What I wanted to spend this video on. Was. Different, uh, alternate settings. Because. Normally in D&D, we, uh. We do Forgotten Realms. You know, uh, this is the fourth edition book of it. Uh, great, uh, great setting, great line of novels. If you guys want to read, if you guys want to some reading, uh, I don't have it. It's probably behind me. Oh, there, it, there it is. It's one on the top shelf, far right, the one close to the Nutcracker on the. Top shelf. It's a, a it's it's one of the Triss books by Salvador. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, just alternate settings. Uh, it, there are a lot. There are a lot out there. Uh, one being that's always very fun. That's the way is Dark Sun. This is going to be on the fourth edition book. Uh, Post-apocalyptic D and D, or as I like to call it, Fallout D and D, uh, just without the science fiction aspect, more fantasy oriented. You know, it, instead of a nuclear bomb, it's magic. The evil, corrupt sorcerer kings uh, defiled the planet with uh, magic and, you know, their mystical, arcane art kind of thing. And it's fun, you know, it, it's, you know, we don't normally think of D&D wants it, uh, you know, magic outlaw, you know, wizards, outlaws, Gandalf, wanted. J just think about, just think of a water potion with Gandalf on it. It's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, just thinking of stuff that's in it, I mean, they have, like, uh, the Cycreen, the Bugmen. They're made, they're bug men. They're awesome. Awesome. They also had another one. Uh, mules. Uh, half man, half dwarf. So. Bold, bold, bolding dwarves. Without beards. Yeah, it's just. Those are Goliaths. Uh, I don't know if they were ever. Uh, I don't know. It's just it, it. It's cool. It's interesting. It's awesome. Like just it's awesome. And I I've run like I think like one or two Dark Sun games with my group, and it's fun. It's not D and D. It's not typical D and D. It's it's not. We've got the ring of power. We have to go throw it in the fires of Mount Doom in the lands of Mordor. Nah, nah, nah. It's much more. We're low on water, low on food. It's a thirty. It's a thirty day. Or a thirty mile trek to town, and it's hot, and it's a desert. And we're walking, so it, 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 it's like gonna have to survive. And, and it's just it's it's what it is. It starts on it's survival, and then there's uh, uh in the book I have, and it was probably in the AD and D stuff. Just stuck it, but uh, weapon breakage rules. Um, yeah, weapons break. That's cool. 
the thing is, they put weapon break controls in here, but I don't know if they ever, I should really check it, if they ever did a weapon repair rules. Because, you know, once the weapon breaks, you know, can't I repair the damn thing? But anyway, yeah. Uh, another thing in Dark Souls, slavery is big. Big in Dark Souls. Uh, because that's what you do to survive. Uh, to either kill it or be killed, you know? Which is fun. Very interesting, I always thought. Um, actually, I, I never really thought it was more flawed. I always thought, by the first time I saw this picture, I thought it was more Conan. Conan the Barbarian. But uh, anyway, moving along on the topic of alternate settings, uh, Eberron. Eberron. Uh, for some reason, uh, a lot of people give Eberron a lot of flack, and I don't understand why. It, it's a setting where it's high fantasy meets steampunk meets Reds of the Lost Ark, film noir, going down, getting you know different magic items and then selling them or whatever, or protecting them. And yeah, it's just it's cool setting. It's technology based, you know, with magic and I don't know. It, it's just if people give a flag, I don't know why. Maybe one of you out there who doesn't like Eberron, you know, can tell me. I mean, hell, they. Don't those books don't fall. What they gave us. The Warforged? Yeah, the, like, the, the, atom, uh, the automaton men? Yeah. They, they came out of Eberron, so I, I mean. I really hope those books don't fall. But yeah, like. It's not that all that bad of a setting. I mean, maybe, but anyway, if anybody's out there, please, please leave a comment below. Shoot me your complaints with Everon, you know. I'd love to hear them. Because, quite frankly, <laughs> but there's enough drama surrounding D&D already. Uh, uh, the next one is Alkadim, which is an old uh, second edition setting, which was uh, Arabian Nights. It was essentially Dark Sun, but without the world going to shit. You know, it was desert. It was Oh, we got Arabs, you know, with the turbans, the scimitars, you know, the sultans, you know, and I'm being racist. Sorry. Sorry if I offended anyone out there. But yeah, uh, once again, a very cool setting. It's something we don't see that often in D&D. &D. We, we don't see different cultures' point of views of the Middle Ages, because, I mean, you know, okay, I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking, uh, you know, it'd be cool? The Crusades! You know, ah, oh, yeah, going to, you know, you get knights in the Crusades and you go, ah! Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm, I'm writing that down. Writing that down. Crusades. Writing that down. Writing it down for a later adventure, guys. Um,. Another really far out there setting, uh, Spelljammer, uh, which was essentially Star Trek meets D and D. Which, if it sounds silly, it probably could be, but I don't. That would be a fun setting, uh, I think, uh, just because it's these giant like galleon ships going off into space, and space pirates, and elves and elves in space, and wizards and. Swing out the deck like Errol Flynn and casting magic missiles. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be, that'd be red. Um, another very unique setting, and one that almost everyone who played D&D &D back in the day, who I've seen, loves, is Planescape. Planescape. And why can't you? It's the planes, it's awesome, it's now, alignment plays a role, a big role in it, which alignment never really does in D and D. If you think about it, we're never really shackled to alignment, or unless you have a hard ass DM. I don't know. But yeah, it, it's cool. It's it's planescape, you know. It's you know the afterlife for these planes, and there's you know. You know, the gods control them, and they're also alignment-based, and, you know, demons hate devils, because devils are lawful evil, and demons are chaotic evil. 
long story. And then there's the Blood War, where evil has to fight evil, or else evil overwhelms the earth and good gets crushed, or stuff. Awesome, awesome shit. Um, of course, we could spend the whole day talking about Planescape, the whole night. But, uh, another uh, thing which I don't know much about. And if any, uh, if anybody knows anything about it, please shoot me a comment. Are the old, uh, first edition Oriental adventures, which was, uh, from what I gather was, uh, D&D in Asia, you know, China and Japan and stuff. And that doesn't surprise me because in the first edition of Deities and Demigods, uh, they have the section of the, of those mythos, which that is cool. You know, samurai and ninja and ah, oh, like awesome shit. You know, I mean, sure, you'd have to work it out, but I think people can do it. I have full confidence in DMs out there. You could do it. Full confidence. Full confidence. Um, another one that's very well beloved, Ravenloft, got the core setting. Probably the only time in D and D there there's actual horror, well, maybe a couple times, but yeah, actual horror in D and D, which we don't normally see. Like, cause the ends we, we try to put horror in there, and you know we'll, we'll get there. You know, like around Halloween we'll do a horror based game. But yeah, it's like no way we'll get there. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I I kind of cop out on my descriptions, even though I hate it. I just my players get so obsessed with killing things. But, uh, yeah, uh, another cool thing, which is really, really cool. Another saying, this isn't a full setting, and just saying it would be cool, is I'm starting to fall more into cyberpunk and cyberpunk RPGs, which I'll save that for another video. And I was just thinking, what if they did D&D and cyberpunk? Like, D&D like D &D magic... You know, elves, cyberpunk. I mean, I guess you could argue that's like the Shadowrun RPG, but not really. Shadowrun even follows its kind of own thing. Like, I mean, I mean, I guess it kind of wrecks the joy of cyberpunk. But just, what if you had an elf with a cyborg arm? Just think about it. Think about. It. Kind of want to draw that. Yeah, kind of want to draw that now. But I probably fail this report. Um. Oh, okay. my dog's sleeping underneath my desk. Um, I mean, even more like, if we don't think of, yeah, if we don't think of campaigns, if we don't just do it like killing a dragon, if we do it like escorting settlers across this land, you know, and bandits, you know, if we focus more on that, maybe, you know, like, just different settings, you know, and that's really what this video is about, is different settings, and to get your mind jogging of creativity, because, like, like, first, like, uh, one of the old uh, commercials for D&D back in the 80s I watched, the game is a product of your imagination, it's, what, what you put into it is what you get, oh, Jerry, you're sleep. Oh, you're, you're snoring up a storm. Dog. But yeah, it's just cool. And even if you want, yeah, you know, want to do something where you want to switch roles of a bad guy and stuff like that, you know, that's cool. You know. And actually, I wouldn't even tell them. I wouldn't even tell your players that, hey, we're playing Dark Sun, you know. I mean, you could do that, and I did that. And I kind of freaked them into the setting, but you know, it'd be really cool if you just sprung it on them. I feel like you took these hardened settlers, these hardened adventurers who are reached the right hardy level of five, level five, and yeah. And then, like, you take them out of nice, comfortable high fantasy world, and you transported them to Dark Sun. And it's like, what the fuck? Uh, uh, 
Oh, you want my steel plate? Ah, oh, get back, get back. Duh, you can't have my steel. It, it's mine. Because in Dark Sun, steel is rare and actually used for currency. I think I'm pretty sure. But yeah. It would just be cool. And it would, you'd throw your players off guard. And your players are probably listening to you better. But I have a, my players have problems with listening. So I would naturally try to get them to listen. And the role play. Yeah, but I've already covered that in another video. <laughs> We're not going back into that. But yeah, anyway. This video is getting pretty lengthy. Uh, of just me rambling. But anyway, yeah. Uh... Anyway, yeah, if you have any discussions, please leave a comment, you know, uh, yeah, we can chat about it. If, uh, if you guys want, to, if one of you want to make a video response to it, I encourage it. Uh, you know, like this video, share it with your friends, uh, watch one of my others if, on my channel, uh, and like it, and, uh, subscribe. Uh, like I said, I don't normally get videos out that often, but when I do, I try to, I try to make it worth something. I know it's just really half time me rambling, but it's fun. Uh, moving some papers around, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no. If anybody wants, if you guys have any questions, yeah, you can always message me here on Facebook. Yeah, uh, or just leave a comment and uh, subscribe. And I'm John, and uh, I'm gonna leave it off. I'm John. I'm John. You're signing off, and happy gaming.